Hopefully. All right. And we are recording. Um, thanks for coming to this next in our series of Power Apps processes. Um, we are going to introduce this particular uh, session um, by talking about the learning management system uh, mm -hmm. here okay. at City U. Okay. So, Scott, I'm going to turn that over to you if that's all right. Okay. Okay. Morgan, can you mute yourself? Okay, thank you all again to welcome you to the next part of our um, training process or uh, training series here. I'm excited for this one. Uh, this was a process again that uh, in the reorganization, uh, Arlene and uh, Molly had presented to me and seemed like a really solid uh, piece of process that they'd put in place for the School of Business and Management. And uh, we have been working to make it scalable for the rest of the, the schools. Uh, that's meant some work on Arlene's part in Power Apps. So thank you to her and, and her team for uh, getting this built out in a way that is, is usable for uh, all the admins across the schools. Uh, and I wanted, I've had a couple of questions as, as we have rolled this out about um, why we're doing this. Uh, I don't think I need to do this. We teach in person. I don't think I need to do this. We teach in uh, different modalities. Uh, this doesn't apply to us. So I wanted to just do a quick update before I turn this over to the training portion. Uh, just a couple of policy reminders and expectations that, that we have as an institution and, and that I have as a provost. So I'm gonna real quick share my screen here. My glasses today, so excuse me for squinting. I think this is it here. All right, we all see this. So two policies that I wanted to share. Uh, first, this is just a, a general policy on use of the learning management system. Uh, and essentially that, that middle piece there says that um, all courses, regardless of mode, must use the learning management system. Um, that's not so much of a problem for us here locally. We do have some issues with some of our sites around the globe that we are working with to ensure consistency with this policy. Uh, and as we move to D2L, uh, those, those few places where perhaps we're not uh, upholding this as much, we're certainly going to move to that with the, the move to D2L. But the second policy really is the, the piece that I wanted to focus on before we launch into the, the training itself. This more clearly specifies how we use the learning management system by modality. And I'm not going to go through all the different modalities. We will send this document out following this training uh, with a link to this uh, recording. But the significant component here that I want to make sure we're all aware of and paying attention to is the use regardless of modality. So the, the first part of this policy really outlines this pretty clearly um, so that as it says, faculty who teach are required to adhere to the following standards in the LMS, regardless of delivery mode. I, sh I, I want to say that while this policy predates me, I really support this policy because what I want for our students is a consistent experience across courses and um, faculty, excuse me, I blanked there on, on the word I was looking for, courses and faculty. So. Um, it's really important, I think, that students know where they are in a course, how to manage a course, uh, and where to find how they're doing in a course, most specifically. Um, I, I will say a good portion of fa uh, student complaints that make it my way are related to faculty not getting back to students in a timely manner, not grading in a timely manner, not knowing how they're doing in a course. It causes a lot of trepidation for students. And so these guidelines, I think, are really aimed at helping to provide that consistency for students so that regardless of the course, regardless of the faculty, they know where to find their syllabus, they know where to find their grades, they know where to find this key component of how to be a student here at this. So that welcome announcement, um, including faculty information, that, that should include uh, from the faculty how to get in touch with them, what their preferred um, mode of communication is. We don't dictate the you're available by text or email or whatever phone uh, that, 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 that should be spelled out there. Um, any course announcements, course documents, all of that stuff, any of the PowerPoint presentations, that they're providing 
an in-person course, they need to be posted in the LMS. Uh, the gradebook component to me is one of the most important. Um, once again, students need to know where to go to find out how they're doing on their grades. Um, the gradebook, of course, also spells out sort of the scope of the entire course and possible points and how they're doing towards that. So that's a really important component to me. Um, the syllabus is key. Again, um, it's something they should be able to, re to refer back to and, and, and have a consistent place to find that. Uh, and then all assignments should be submitted and graded with rubrics through that as well. Um, this is a particularly important one with our programmatic assessment activities. Uh, so the, the ability that we have to draw data from those LMSs LMS's courses in the LMS is dependent on faculty using the grading rubrics and grading their assignments in the LMS. Um, and the other component that is really critical is the end of course surveys that we give students. Those are done through Blackboard. And so um, if faculty are consistently using the learning management system, we know that students will be able to access those EOCEs as well. So just wanted to provide that quick overview of those policy issues, kind of the, the why we're focused on these things. Um, as Mariah will explain, there's a couple components to these shell checks. Uh, we're just focusing on one component of that today. Um, and the feedback given from these is really meant to be advisory. It's not to get anyone in trouble. It's not to catch anyone. Um, it's, it's really just meant to be advisory, uh, particularly if we start to see a pattern with faculty over quarters, like, hey, you're really not doing this. We need to address that and, and, and make sure that the faculty are complying with our expectations for students. And with that, I will turn it back to uh, Mariah and team for the training. Perfect. Thanks, Con. Um, so as Scott mentioned, um, the course shell review process happens in two stages. So this meeting is actually focused on the first, the first stage of this process, and that's the initial shell check. Um, the second one we'll talk about next week, which is the faculty engagement review. And that typically happens midway through each quarter. Um, the initial shell check happens right before the start of each quarter so that you can communicate effectively with your faculty. So as we work through the review um, of these, we are really working through each course to be sure that all required elements are in the shell. And our team, the admin team, is not making any judgment about the quality of content. And all online courses, mixed mode and in-class courses are subject to this review with the exception of capstone courses, internship uh, courses, enhanced learning courses and the ILCs. The initial shell check is um, actually completely related to the policy that Scott just went over. And all the elements in this process are meant as a checklist. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The admins team role in this process is to review each element of the course to ensure that it is included in the shell. And then they have the ability to communicate directly with you about what may be missing in each shell. So they'll communicate that with you and Anna will show you how that happens. And then you can reach out directly to the teaching faculty about what may need to be added or updated. Um, I think a lot, like Scott, um, the team is really, really believes that, that this, the, the quality of the shell and the information provided in the shell really has an impact on student experience and making a positive on, impression on students from the beginning of the course lends itself to student satisfaction. And the easier it is for students to find things in the course shell um, means the more successful they're likely to be. Plus, they will spend less time emailing you and asking you about particular elements of the shell or information that they need to find, which means you spend less time emailing directly with the students, answering those particular questions. Um, 
one of the things I wanted to mention last week is that this and other parts of the, the processes and systems built in Power Apps allows us to communicate effectively with each other, um, particularly as we are working remotely. So um, now I think it's a good time to toss it over to Anna to walk us through what that process actually looks like. Thank you, Mariah. Um, so as mentioned previously, we will be focusing this um, during this session on initial shell review. As compared to the mid-quarter shell review, it's pretty straightforward. There's only four or five components that a person has to pay attention to. And so based on my own experience of doing initial shell reviews, it normally takes, with certain practice, about five minutes in each shell. But in the long run, when you compare the outcomes that you receive from that initial shell review, it's a significant investment. So I'm going to share the screen right now. So moving forward with this session and then a subsequent session next week, we will be focusing on this portion of the Power Up system, which is a faculty engagement review. And it consists of several important parts uh, for documenting instructors' performance. So it's a initial shell review form, which we'll be talking about today. And it's basically making sure that all the components that have to be present in the shell before students get in there are actually ready. Uh, Mid-quarter shell review is the second portion which is happening from week four through week eight, and it's just more spread out because there are more things to pay attention to. Um, additionally, for mixed mode and in-class modes, we have been implementing as well um, in-class observations or virtual observations, which allow to see how well instructors are um, doing um, both in class, how they're upholding the the audience, um, how they're delivering the material. And also within the pandemic environment, how, how well they're coping with the situation and with this virtual environment that they're put in. Uh, that is something that is conducted by the program directors and program managers, but there is a specific tab, specific space in the Power Apps, which allows to document this type of observations. So the portions of shell review, so faculty engagement evaluations that admins are partaking are initial shell review and a midterm shell review. Initial shell review is happening a day prior to students getting access to live course shells. And of course, that's something that can be um, changed on the school basis because we had this type of conversation with other admins. One of the reasons that School of Business and Management, School of Technology and Computing conducting it one day prior is because there's different time frame to when instructors are getting assigned. And so we are making sure that everyone gets equal time to update the course show. So basically at this point, we are assessing the readiness of the shell prior to the start of the, of the term. And on the right, you can see the initial shell review checklist that uh, the person designated to complete the review is following. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I will be speaking from my own experience of how I do the initial shell reviews. So first thing, you go into the course shell, you switch on to the student view, and you take a look what the student is seeing basically from their perspective, what they're seeing when they're, when, when they're entering the shell. What they're supposed to see is a customized welcome announcement and a week one announcement. Templates for weeks two through 10 must be hidden from their view. And it doesn't only include the weekly announcement templates, it also includes the any type of announcements that are left in the shell for the instructor specifically. Um, Next thing that is checked that's 
the readiness of the faculty information portion of the course shell, which should have a faculty bio with a picture and contact information and overview of their professional experience, uh, program director's bio, um, librarian's bio, and of, or librarian center portion that is, I think was updated in most of the shells right now. So there's not reference to the specific person, but, but rather to the librarian center. And again, all templates must be hidden. And moving forward later on, we will discuss common issues that might be happening with, with each of the sections. But for right now, we are going over the requirements. Course information should contain the course syllabus um, with the portion of the information that needs to be updated, like um, attendance policies, late submission policies, the the header, so the uh, name of the instructor and contact information. So in other words, when there's two things that we are checking. First is whether the syllabus looks as a template or it looks as an actual document. And second, if it's downloading and opening correctly, because sometimes there are situations when you're trying to download the document and it's not opening on your site. And then that's probably a good reason to reach out to the instructor and check what's going on and whether that's happening for everyone. Uh, the schedule should be updated. We are requiring the instructors to input dates into their schedules. And one of the reasons is to make sure that they understand the timeline for the course and they are adhering to that time. So previously, when we send out invitations to instructors, we specify what timeline, preparation timeline they should anticipate. Uh, some of the things that we are conducting that made it a stable practice include the enrollment checks. So we update um, instructors on the enrollments first um, day prior to when they receive access to the live shell. And the second time, which is more accurate, um, day, I believe, day prior to initial shell review being conducted. So they're aware of how many students they should anticipate and whether there's any potential that the section might be canceling due to low enrollment. It's, we consider it kind of like a courtesy practice because we well value the time of our instructors and we also value our own time. Um, so they're aware when initial shell review is happening. And also on Monday prior, we are informing um, instructors that the review will be happening and what components we will be paying attention to upon doing the review. So they know exactly what we will be looking at. We're pretty transparent in that regard. And they just need to make sure that all, the, all of these components are prepared. We are also providing information on the dates that each course runs. And one of the practices that we have started to implement recently is making sure that the start and especially the end date for the courses corresponds to the one in PeopleSoft. Because for the mixed mode and in classes, there were often situations where instructors were thinking that, OK, if an online course, for instance, for spring is from April 5th to through June 13th, it means that that applies to exactly every single section, which is not the case. As you know, mixed mode sections can end on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. So at any time, and when that happens, it means that all the assignments, all the course activity must be due that end date of the course. And so schedule is that way of tracking how well they're adhering to this policy and whether they understand specifically um, the time frame for the course. Uh, the last thing that we check upon initial shell review is the grade center. And the only thing we're checking is that the total grade column is equal to seven points. So when you hover over the total column, it's re reflecting seven points total. Um, that's several thing that, things that this specific practice does. Um, one of them, we're making sure that there's every course shell has standardized number of points. So when the students are receiving their grade, 
it's it's not fluctuating from partial to partial. It's getting the same type of percentage distribution, the same type type of output moving. Um, also, it if there is some kind of deviation from the standard, uh, maybe there's rubrics that are included in the total grade that the instructor is not aware of. Oh, or if there's any any specific column that is activated and it shouldn't be. So it allows the instructor to check the second time, check the grade center the second time and make sure that it's ready and the way they want it to be. Now, there's sometimes instances when um, the total is off by certain decimals, a couple of decimals due to some internal transfer which is absolutely okay. And we normally know about this type of course shells and we just know what the situation is there specifically. But as a standard, the total grade column is supposed to be equal to seven points. Additionally, one of the practices that I like to do is I'm checking the um, due date for the end assignments. So the final assignment and end assignments for the module 10 uh, half of the time there is not set, set up, the, the other half of the time they are. And so just checking those columns, we are making sure that again, the end date is set up correctly. So it's good practice to do that as well and remind the instructors if it's not happening, how it is supposed to be happening. Um, so in Power Apps, when you go into the record for the specific course to activate the series. So it's kind of performed in series. So you have to conduct an initial shell review in order to be able to access the mid-quarter shell review. In a way, it um, enforces that type of sequence, of natural sequence for reviewing the course shell. When you activate, click on new initial review and activate the form, that's what you see. And these fields are kind of bigger than they are actually on the form. It's because I've connected them for a more convenient view, but there you have to scroll down a little bit to see them. Um, some of the fields include the status and you can see on the left breakdown of what options you have for the status. So you mark no issues when there's no problems that have been found within the course shell, pending to signal that certain components need immediate attention from the course manager. And then in the drop down, you're either specifying at standard for every single field, or you're specifying what's wrong for the specific criterion here. And fixed, if, if the uh, record notes as pending, um, eventually, either a course manager or um, an administrative support needs to go back into the form and switch that the to denote that issues were fixed and the date that they were fixed, simply for documentation purposes to keep track whether this issue was resolved and it we don't need to go back to the same type of problem upon the mid quarter shell review. So it's pretty straightforward, as you can see, faculty bio whether it's there or not, whether it's complete or not. Profile picture, whether it's at standard, so it follow, follows an established format or whether it's missing. Faculty information, um, whether it's a standard or insufficient, meaning that there's either a faculty bio is missing or the program director's bio is missing or templates are present and whatnot. Um, course syllabus, schedule, welcome announcement, weekly announcements, there's an option to identify that certain templates are visible and in the comments, the person in charge of review can specify which templates ex exactly need to be hidden from the student view. Um, grade book, um, either a standard or incorrect number of points and also rubrics, um, predominantly this type of issues is taken care of long before the course shell is deployed. Um, so we just automatically mark it at standard. Some fields that are 
uh, worth your attention specifically for your portion of the review is course manager action taken and course manager comments. So once the issues have been resolved, you have to specify how you reached out to the instructor and whether you reached out to them. And maybe if there's any additional type of insights, you can put it in the comments down below. Another quite helpful tool is the attachments. So it gives you an opportunity, and that's something that I utilize quite often personally. Uh, when I go into the shell and I notice the issue, I take a screenshot of that issue and mark where exactly the problem exists. And it makes it much easier for the course manager to communicate when there's problems, there are problems going on. And also it makes the life of the instructor easier so they know exactly where to go to fix the issue. Um, also for initial shell review, um, upon completion, there's two options for administrative support to notify the designated course manager that the review has for their courses has been completed. Um, you can either go in Teams or go to the Outlook and let the person know, or you can use the function within the Power Up system, which is the button Notify Course Manager. And it already has the template within, with a link and the template message. And so you can just select the name of the person and click Send. And we'll send it directly to the Outlook of that person. Some, here's a breakdown of some of the most common issues uh, that might be noticed upon the initial shell review. So you can see here for the announcements, for, for instance, there are no announcements in student review. And that's one of the good reasons to turn the student preview on when you go into the course shell, because there might be everything set up, all the announcements are perfect, but when you click student preview, nothing is showing. So there's this type of problems that might be happening. Um, also, there are situations when announcements are set up specifically to be deployed on Monday or on Tuesday when course is starting. So we are not addressing this type of circumstances, only if it's disabled and there's no time set up for it to be deployed in the first week, then that's a signal for us to contact the instructor and check what's going on. Again, I'm telling contact the instructor, but that's the course manager who contacts them directly. We are just um, an extra set of eyes, as I would say. So we are doing the work of going into the shell and collecting any type of issues that might be happening. And then it's up to the course manager and uh, course administrator to communicate those types of issues with their faculty. Uh, another thing that might be happening in the course shell is all announcements in student view are visible, including templates. So as a student myself, I, I would find it a little bit discouraging to go into the course shell and realize uh, that all of the announcements are already in there and kind of takes off away the impression that the instructor is working <laughs> in the course shell and working every week to communicate with the students. So we are ensuring that all the templates are disabled from the student view. Also, as I mentioned previously, random reminders intended for instructor are visible in student view. So again, this type of the message that is more administrative and pertaining to the faculty work and not something that students necessarily need to see. For faculty information, again, as I've mentioned, uh, templates visible in the student view, something like that, or wrong information for the instructor or program director or duplicated bios. So basically, there needs to be one of each, and it needs to be for the correct person who is actually teaching the course. Um, another issue that might be happening, picture is missing, either too small or it's misplaced, it's on the left, it's on the bottom. Uh, there's white stripes going over the photo, which might be happening when the formatting hasn't been hasn't been removed, and so it's just showing that way. 
uh, for course information, missing dates from the schedule, uh, template instead of contact information and syllabus or wrong name of the person, wrong contact information of the person. Incorrect end dates for the course, that's something that we try to eradicate before the start of the course. So the instructor doesn't need to accommodate midway. Um, also, and I, I'm not sure how in the other schools the shells are organized, but um, in School of Business Management, School of Technology and Computing, there is a um, field that says updated, which allows to enter the date when the files were loaded and it makes it also life easier for us when we know that if there's nothing here, it's either person forgot to update it or it wasn't loaded and there's nothing in there anyways. So either removing that text or updating it with the correct date. And for the grade center, as I mentioned previously, two small things. One total grade column should equal to thousand points. And second, um, which I think is a very effective practice as well, making sure that dates for final assignments are correct and set up correctly for the specific course. So that's it for the initial shell review. And now we are opening the panel for questions. So what questions do you guys have about this particular process? Where is the link so we can access this? Oh. Yes, sure. Well, well, there's no direct link to the initial shell, to the shell review component. There's a link to the system, to the power up system. And um, let me actually go to the... Yeah, I was just looking, I was in there trying to follow along and did not... <coughs> did not just, um, let me go into the system and I will share the screen and show, show it to you in action. Anna, so would you uh, confirm again? So you have an initial review, also you have a progress review. What do you expect from the each uh, program manager? So would you uh, reassure those things? Yeah, you had something, then you expect it from us, right? Yeah. Yes. So for initial shell review, what we anticipate is once it is completed, it needs to be communicated in a timely manner to the instructors that those issues need to be fixed and uh, making sure that they are completed before the start of the course, specific course. For online courses, it's Monday. For some courses, it would be Tuesday, Wednesday, but just making sure when the course kicks off, it's all the issues are fixed because if one or the other problem like incorrect points or incorrect dates is lingering, it's very easy to forget about it. And then closer to the end of the course, it's too late to fix anything. And you will get complaints from the students. Uh, for mid-quarter shell review, it's mostly we are providing observations of what's going on in the course shell because we do realize that program directors, program managers are busy and won't have time to access 160 shells as I have to do each term. So, if there's no issues, again, we have a practice in the School of Business and Management when we communicate compliments for the instructors who are doing a really great job. And also, predominantly, it's again making sure that there's no problems. Again, those are observations, and I try to provide as many screenshots and evidentiary support as possible so you are able to make an informed decision of what's going on. So it's not just, you know, the view of me as an individual, but that's rather some kind of a collective decision that we are making about the question. Um, so it's a communication is the most important part because when admins can't reach out individually to, to the instructors, it's, we don't have, we don't hold this enough amount of power, you know, to be lecturing them. And especially like for myself personally, being much younger doesn't help <laughs> as well to, you know, enforce this kind of, 
you know, the, the interaction, the communication. Um, so yeah, just making sure that those things are visible and they're communicated to the faculty. And we hope that you would use the power system, the power app system to for your own documentation purposes, because it has quite a lot of fields and quite a lot of forms that you can utilize. Um, and also you can reuse those forms later on when you're making the nominations and you're curious, okay, how this instructor was doing. And I remember there was some kind of issues, but I don't remember exactly what it was. You can go into the power apps and check, okay, in this term, this person had this type of problem, but they recovered the next quarter. They understood the requirements and expectations, and right now they have no issues. That's the type of instructor that you want to see in your subsequent courses. And then there's the person who have been communicated the same thing over and over again multiple times, but nothing is happening. So maybe that's again signal for you. Either the person needs a refresher, like a new faculty orientation, they need to be reassigned to specific courses, or maybe they're not that interested in teaching. Um, let me show the screen to where we can find it. So you can see right now the landing page. You go into the course nominations and then the faculty engagement review. And it should load it for your school specifically. I'm not going to open it right now because it's going to um, um, go into the records of the specific school. And I don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, you click the button and it should open the view for your school. And then on the bottom that there will be four controls, new initial review, which when you just get started, that's the only button that's going to be enabled. Then um, update initial shell review, update mid-quarter shell review, in-class observations and notify manager. So yeah, it's just from the landing page, course nomination and faculty engagement review. That's what FE stands for. All right, this is a quiet bunch today. Anything else guys? Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, hi, Anna. Um, so great process. I've been, you know, when Arlene started this, it was wonderful. Now you've taken it over and been building this out. My question is, are you the one that's going to continue to look at the shells? Or is, are you saying that that's our job? Or are you saying that you're looking at them, you're telling me, or do I have to just go here? And uh, then I have to communicate with the uh, instructor and ensure that updates occur like that day or the next day kind of thing. Well, with the School of Business and Management, we kind of have an established process. And most likely we are going to follow it the same way. It pro works pretty well. So I'm going to the shell, checking all the shells. Then as soon as I'm done, I'm emailing the instructor like I would email Greg and say, okay, these are the course shells that have issues. Could you please look into it? Then Greg is looking into it and on the next day is getting back to me like, okay, this issues have been fixed. And then I'm going into the form in the information. Uh, for other schools, maybe there will be a practice to where you would be able to find time and go and update it yourself because it makes it easy. I would say it makes it easier one person going in there and updating 160, or it's more, you know, proportion between people. Uh, for mid-quarter shell review, it's since it's going from week four through week eight, it's more more dispersed, so there's more time to provide the input into the system, and you don't have to worry about it that much. But I think, yeah, for School of Business and Management, School of Technology and Computing, we're pretty much established here. <laughs> Well, and it, the same is true actually for health and social sciences, uh, the research institute, and oh my gosh, who am I forgetting? School of Education. Sorry, Vicki. Um, Education and leadership. And, right. And we, so we're doing the same Thank thing. You. The admins are going in, doing the initial pass through, walking through the checklist, making sure that those items are there in the way that they're supposed to be communicating with the course managers, um, sorry, 
program directors, program managers, and then you guys will communicate out to your individual faculty. So the process is pretty much the same across the board. Um, I wouldn't worry about that changing too much until or unless um, we or you guys see a need to make a change in that process. So maybe after we do this for a year, we go back to the process, dissect it, see what needs to be updated. So Roy, I things specific oh. here is first, sorry. <laughs> One thing is for you to know what's going on for each portion of the review. And second thing, if you want to look up, for instance, for the specific instructor, the type of information, or if you want to add something because, you, because you've had a conversation with the instructor and you want to put like a mind note, a reminder in there, you, you have the place to go and to complete that portion of the documentation. Presley, I'm sorry, did you have a question? Presley. Yeah, I did. I'm sorry. I couldn't find my button. Um, so when the last review was done, and maybe this has changed because I was just looking at Anna's slide and, and I think that maybe this has changed, but the admin for the School of Education or whoever was checking our shells was looking for the rubrics under course information. And we don't put rubrics there in my program. We put them actually on attached to the assignment. And I told her that and she said she would adjust it and fine. But if I'm not mistaken, y'all don't check for rubrics anymore. Is that correct? Or we don't check for rubrics it, only specifically if there is a need to check in all the shells. We're trying to make sure that it's done before it is deployed in the live shell. Great. Okay, great. That's all I need to know. Thank you. What else you have for us? I just like to say that I, you know, initially I thought there were there were probably a lot more things that this review could uh, could cover, uh, but I think limiting the number of items that the review covers is a good way to put the process into place and to see what we can, how much we can review, uh, how much we want to review. I think the I think it's a good start. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, initial shell review is very much common sense. So a very straightforward checklist type of review. So you're going in there for five minutes and looking whether everything is looking correctly. Mid-quarter shell review is a little bit more complicated and we're going to talk about it in more detail next week. I think the main, Part of what we're all looking forward to, if I can say that, um, is that we're transitioning to the D2L and there's gonna be a pilot group that's testing that coming up in April and it'll probably be deployed uh, potentially fall quarter this year. And so D2L is laid out a little bit differently than what Blackboard is, but largely I think this process in reviewing the shell is going to remain largely the same unless we identify some need in D2L to check particular pieces as well. Um, at some point, I think there was a conversation about schedule being included in the syllabus, which is a relatively common way to see the schedule, but D2L breaks that out in a different way. So we might have to like adjust this a little bit as we transition. Um, I really think that the main Part of this process was inspired by uh, Laura Williamson, actually, who came from an institution that actually did the shell checks regularly to make sure that what the students were seeing was uh, consistent every single class they took, no matter which class in the school they were taking or in the university they were taking. So that's where we want to get with this, that a student can check, click on, say they, it, explore in uh, technology and computing. They take a couple of classes, they see their courses, and then they decide maybe they don't wanna be uh, in technology and com computing and they switch over to counseling. They should be able to see things in an identical format or as identical as we can get them considering the changes between programs. So really it is you know, just us going in and making sure all those components are there communicating with you guys 
And so that you can communicate with your faculty, it's also a really good way to stay connected with your teaching faculty. Um, you know, if, if you select a teaching faculty and they never hear from you, are they ever going to want to come back and teach for us if they don't hear from you? You know what I mean? So it's a good way to stay connected to the teaching faculty as well. I would also say that we were seeing excellent results over the time since this process was first implemented because when the person knows that they are held accountable and also if they know exactly what is expected from them it's i noticed that from quarter to quarter it's easier and easier to conduct those reviews mm -hmm. and you can go in more into more nuanced things to go from at standard to excellent and amazing so i think um School of Education and Leadership and School of Counseling or Health and Social Sciences, sorry, and the Research Institute experienced this process once so far. So the next quarter will be the second time they will have experienced this process. And so we should see some improvement from quarter to quarter um, with our process itself, with how we communicate with you, um, and then again with the faculty. Anything else? What's that for me? Um, I have, yeah, this is Brian Ming, and I think this is a great tool. Thank you, Mariah and Anna. Um, I know that every quarter that you guys have been working hard to review course shells and send a bunch of emails. I hope, you know, there is a, some easy function for you to retrieve all the status and <laughs> send to the program manager. Uh, I hope um, there is a, some, you know, convenient function for you as well. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, um, it's it can be challenging sometimes, and so we hope that it will, as we move forward and expand, it will become more automated. But at the same time, the more experience you get with those type of reviews, the quicker it happens because you already know what to expect, and you also kind of delineate the priorities. So instructors who always outperform. So they're always doing an amazing job. They can be left for later in the initial review versus those that are either new to the process or are teaching the first term or the ones that are, they, I, would, I don't wanna say the constant troublemakers, but it feels this way. <laughs> they just need more support. <laughs> Not necessarily troublemakers. Yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you. All right, so we are nearing the end of our hour. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to email me or Anna. Um, we will um, translate to this recording into some kind of shareable video and we'll send that out to you guys as soon as we can. Um, if you need a new copy of the policies that will also be included. And then next week we will go through the mid quarter uh, shell check or faculty engagement review. Um, it is a little bit more complicated and there is a rubric attached. Um, so I'll, we'll send that out in a reminder for next week. Um, in as much as there is a rubric, it is very much the same as um, our team, the admin team actually going through a checklist process to give you the information you need to communicate out to your faculty. So that's what we can look forward to next week. But in the meantime, thank you guys very much. Have a great, great evening and we'll talk to you next time. Another quick update. There has been a work in progress for uh, granting all the program directors within the, the school the same access. So if you could please find time this week, I realize that week 10 is very busy for everyone. Just go into the system and check if you are able to update the records for someone other than you. And if for some reason you are not able to, please let me so we can keep working and keep making that improvement. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.